Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Stephanie. I am a life and relationship coach. This week we are gonna talk about narcissistic personality disorder and we're going to talk about the types of people that someone who is narcissistic does not like. So either you have always had these traits or have behaved in this way, or maybe you're just starting to actually behave in this way. So people often ask me, they this person used to like me and all of a sudden they just cannot stand me or why does this person treat me in this way why are they so nasty why are they so mean and it is because you are one of these people <laughs> that they don't like because you're exuding these character traits number one an empath we all know this if you are empathetic if you are empathetic you're actually someone that a narcissist loves and someone that a narcissist actually hates they love you because you give them empathy. You listen to their story, you feel bad for them, and they love the attention. You unknowingly want to save this person, and that can be really dangerous if you are an empath because you are just opening yourself up to be abused and taken advantage of. Now, the reason why a narcissist actually hates an empath is because you are representing everything that this person is not. They do not have the ability to empathize with other people. They don't have the ability to have real deep connections with other people, and if you're empathetic, then you crave that. You love deep connection. That's why you are the way you are. Your ability to be liked pretty much by a lot of people for just being who you are. If you're an empath, chances are you, yes, you might have insecurities. Yes, you might have anxieties or whatever it is, but for the most part, you know who you are and you're actually comfortable in your own skin and you enjoy it. And that's going to be something that someone who's narcissistic really just cannot stand. They're just going to be threatened by who you are because you have these traits and these are traits that they don't have. And they can see that and they can see how people love you and they can see how people are drawn to you in a certain way. There's just that certain light that is around you and they know it, they can see it too. And so there's kind of like this love hate relationship between a narcissist and someone who is empathetic. The next thing is going to be assertive and confident people. Of course, someone who's narcissistic absolutely despises someone who is assertive and confident. Now, if you have always been this way, then they probably were never your friend or never actually wanted to be your friend or be in your life. But maybe you weren't always that person and now you are starting to actually assert yourself and be confident. And this is where you're going to get the pushback. If you are being assertive, if you are being confident, then you are going to challenge a narcissist, which is of course what we know they don't love. If you are to the point, if you are calm, if you can communicate clearly, this is not something that someone who's narcissistic wants to be around because you're not someone who can easily be manipulated. You also will hold a level of real healthy confidence that this person does not have. So you might see someone who's narcissistic and think that they are confident, that they have it all, but all of that is really just a front and it's a mask. There's a difference between real calm, healthy confidence and wearing a mask and pretending to be something that you're not. So a lot of it is done from a defense mechanism, from just a place of you, me wanting you to think that I actually am this way when in reality I'm not, because you're not gonna be able to sustain that confidence for a long period of time if it is not something that is just like naturally coming through you. An assertive person is definitely not a person that is afraid to express themselves. You know what you deserve, you know what you want, and you're also always trying to be fair. So these are all traits of a personality that someone who's narcissistic doesn't want anything to do with. This of course doesn't feed into that narcissistic ego. It threatens the ego and it threatens their ability to get what they need out of the situation. The next thing is a person that can really set good boundaries. Now to me, boundaries, assertiveness, and confidence are kind of like all, all one in the same, basically. Telling this person, this narcissist, this toxic person that you have limits, that this isn't okay, you have to be able to be assertive, you have to be able to have great boundaries, because boundaries is not just about assertiveness and telling someone what you think and how you feel, it's also about you being able to then enforce the boundary. And to enforce the boundary takes a, the next level of confidence, because you have to be okay with being a little bit uncomfortable. You have to be okay with making someone upset or hurting someone's feelings if you know it's going to protect you and make sure that you're in the best state possible. This also means, like I said, you are not a person that can be manipulated. You are not a person that is bendable. You will compromise and that's different than being bendable and conforming when someone just gets uncomfortable or when someone tries to throw something else at you like guilt or shame or 
tries to gaslight you or manipulate you or whatever it is that they're that they like to throw at you those things don't work you're not easily influenced by someone else's tactics you are very just steady you're comfortable in your own skin you can assert yourself and you have values you have beliefs that's a, an extremely confident healthy person and most people who are narcissistic want nothing to do with those types of relationships because again they can't get what they want out of that situation because you have rules you have self-respect you have boundaries you have limits and that just leaves this like little tiny space that a narcissist can kind of work in versus you just being open and being easily manipulated and controlled and you don't know who you are and a little weak a little codependent that's not a person that i can really get what i want that's not a person that i can change and influence and manipulate so anyone who is assertive who is confident and remember what I said in the beginning, a big part of this is not you always having been this person. Yes, if you have always been this person, I gotta be honest, chances are you're probably not even watching this video. Chances are you were probably a certain way in the beginning of the relationship with this person. And now you're starting to change. Now you're starting to have boundaries. You're starting to be assertive. You're Maybe you are empathetic and you're starting to see that, wait, at one point this person loved me and now this person actually hates my guts. Like, what is up with that? Like, how did that happen? So you're starting either because they are changing, meaning they're starting to see you for who you really are and they know that they can't control you, then you're starting to get backlash or you are changing and you've changed into that maybe codependent no boundaries kind of person early on to saying wait, wait, wait i'm going to start asserting myself and that this is actually okay you have really grown a pair and you're showing this person that the next type of person is really just anyone who is successful now a successful or accomplished person is it's kind of like the empath it's one of those like love hate things like i love it because i'm associating with this i'm associating with a person that has acknowledgement has success has money has power whatever it is that this person favors but on a certain hand you're actually showing me some stuff that maybe i don't have within myself so maybe i have the same amount of money as you but maybe you have like a different lifestyle or people like you in a way that i know that they don't like me because a narcissist really doesn't even know who they are and they really don't even like themselves so they never even believe that anyone really can see them or love them and that's why they're they fear abandonment so much that this is oftentimes when they blow up relationships they fear intimacy they fear closeness because they don't have it within themselves so they can't have it with anyone else and that's why you're never going to have a real deep connection with anyone who's narcissistic they're never going to be able to tell you who they are what how they feel the traumas that they've been through like and even if they do to some extent they can acknowledge some things you're never going to be able to get deep with this person and that means that no real change can ever happen with this person the next type of personality that just does not do well with someone who's narcissistic is a person who has overcome a lot of obstacles so a person that has overcome a lot has is really self-empowered very resilient you have the next level of strength that not even the average person has because you've gone through so much. Now that means that you are not a person that believes every story, you're not naive, you're just, I don't wanna say you're not bendable, you just, you're a different breed of an individual. The reason why someone who's narcissistic doesn't enjoy this type of personality is because they really perceive you as a threat, that if I can, break you down that you're not going to just shrivel up that you're going to overcome this really threatens the ego because it tells the ego that you don't actually really need this person you're not a weak person you're a very strong person and in order to be in a relationship with anyone being a strong individual you have to be in a relationship with another strong individual what ends up happening a lot of the time in these relationships is someone who's narcissistic will just think that you're too much, that you're hard to please, that you're never happy, you're never satisfied with something. And that's because your bar is way up here and they're just incapable of meeting that. And because you can't see that sometimes, you actually do think you're too much. You actually do think you're the problem. You think that, okay, maybe I, you're right. I, I'm asking for too much out of this person. Maybe I need to just understand who they are and what they're capable of giving. And that's not really your job. Your job is to be able to see 
where people are at and decide whether or not you want to participate in a relationship with them. And you definitely can't do any of that if you're coming from an unhealed place. If you're coming from a place where you have so many wounds and so insecurities and you're trying to fill voids, you're never going to be able to do that. The last person that someone who's narcissistic really just honestly can't stand is just a giving person. Someone who is just a natural healer, giver. They are, I don't want to say they're empathetic too, because you don't have to be someone who's an empath in order to just be an authentic giver, an authentic person. But sometimes the two definitely go hand in hand. But someone who's just a giver has an ability to think about other people other than themselves. And this really threatens the ego because again, it's mirroring that this person, this narcissist is not able to do that, is challenging their behavior because they're not going to behave in the same way that you're behaving. And people are going to see that. People are going to notice that. And that's what threatens their ego. That other people could possibly see them in a way that they don't want to be seen. And the reason why they're looking at them in a different light is because you exude these qualities and these traits and you're next to this person that absolutely does not. So I can't really manipulate you when I'm up against this person who is just like, happy and confident and healthy and a giver and a healer and empathetic and asserts themselves and has boundaries and is comfortable in their own skin and tells me, holds me accountable. These are not things that I want right near me. So to kind of like sum everything up, these different personalities really just trigger this ego. It allows, it makes this person not be able to do a lot of things. Number one, it's gonna cause a narcissistic injury, which means it's going to hit that person right in their self-esteem, even though there's no self-esteem there, but it's gonna bruise that ego. It's gonna trigger things like jealousy and envy. It's going to force them to not be able to manipulate or control you. You're not going to always be able to give them empathy because you don't have empathy for, for a grown up, for someone that is causing these problems because you're holding someone accountable for their actions and you're wanting them to take responsibility and they just can't. You're not giving them the one thing that they really want, which is please look at me as the victim. Remember, you may not have always been this person, but perhaps you are starting to exude certain traits that now this person really just can't stand and they're starting to give you backlash and they're starting to treat you poorly. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some insight. If it did, don't forget to click like down below and also click on subscribe and meet me back here next week for our next video together. Bye.